G'day ladies and gents and welcome to my early access impressions of BOM, the adventures of Marcel Gaston against Time and Pride. BOM is an early access game currently in development by La Moustache Studios and I really feel like I need to put a bad French accent on that name. It's a game that stirred up a lot of nostalgia during me which will be apparent in this video. Many people in the Steam reviews have mentioned that this game bringing up memories of watching Porco Rosso or playing Crimson Skies, however the place where BOM's nostalgia really hit me the hardest was with this. Yep, you just watch an intro from a Disney cartoon that had the cast of Jungle Book flying 1930s fantasy aircraft and shooting guns at one another. The 90s were kind of awesome. What Bomb is, at its core, is a non-Disney version of Tailspin. You play the role of Marcel Le Moustache Gaston, an ace French pilot with a heavy drinking and gambling problem who is down on his luck and constantly finding himself in trouble due to his own antics. He is a pilot for hire flying out of a small city in a small island somewhere in the unidentified Pacific. This sounds a lot like the plotline for Tailspin. During your missions you will encounter sky pirates, gangsters, fictitious military groups and mercenaries along with other pilots and traders. Still sounds a lot like Tailspin. These similarities come to a head in the game's main aircraft. The aircraft are of course the real heroes in BOM. The hero plane you start the game in is the SNAF Type 95 Rorqual, a twin-engine seaplane that seems to be heavily inspired by the Sea Duck from the Tailspin series, which in itself is a fictitious combination of a Fairchild C-82 transport aircraft and a Grumman HU-16 amphibian. Some of the other aircraft you will find in the skies of BOM range from the King KACB, which appears to be a super sleek Focke-Wulf 190 with reverse swept wings to the VB-42 Calamari, a twin-engined aircraft that reminds me a lot of the XP-50 prototype from World War II. These fantasy aircraft could have flown right out of the world of Crimson Skies, so it's not hard to see where the comparisons to that series also come from. The gameplay at its core is an arcade flight game designed with joystick and gamepad in mind. It features third person cameras for all aircraft and cockpit views for some playable aircraft with plans to have cockpits available on all aircraft by release. Stick support also includes compatibility with hotter systems such as the X-55 Rhino and the game is also track IR enabled. What you won't find in BOM's arcade gameplay however is the shooting assistance. You get an iron sight, a gun and traces. How you lead is up to you. The same applies with missions where you are given ordnance. You will receive a basic tutorial mission early in the game to show you how to use rockets, bombs and torpedoes. However, there is no on-screen UI assistance for them. By default, even hostile aircraft markers are disabled. However, you can turn those on in the menu, should you choose to. These settings serve to make BOM both very easy to get into with some immensely satisfying dogfighting, but still make the game challenging enough to make it feel like it's never leading you by the hand. The basic physics, however, do result in a looseness in the controls that may be a little off-putting to some players. In my time in game, I did feel like the aircraft needed to well, feel a little bit more weighty and the pull of gravity needed to be a little bit stronger. Not enough to break the arcade nature of the game, but just enough to give the game a little bit of feeling in its controls and movement. The graphics are worth a mention as well. The self-shading cartoon style is quite beautiful in my opinion. Coupled with the over-the-top characters, it serves to draw you in and make you feel like you are flying in one of those early morning cartoons. The design of the world itself is great, however I feel there's not quite enough life in it. The only aircraft you seem to encounter are directly involved in your mission. The docks, cities and harbours you find yourself flying over and landing in are empty with no activity unless, as I mentioned before, the mission requires it. I think the game would be well served by having some aircraft not related to the mission flying about doing their own thing, some simple character models walking around the docks, or movement in the city streets. Some small fishing boats in the harbour that could complain as you tip them over by landing too close to them. 
The ocean also needs a little work. The water is attractively modelled, the sea floor is well textured, and the cell animations for water splashes as you touch a plane down on the ocean are great. However, having a game where you fly and land a seaplane on and over the ocean, having that ocean empty with no life or colour or movement seems kind of sad. The writing is corny, but in a good way. It's clear the developers didn't want the characters to be taken too seriously, and the story is just wild enough to make you roll your eyes and smile, but not so outrageous as to make you lose interest. There are also some genuinely outright funny moments written into the dialogue. Some of the little quips between the Sky Pirates, particularly the female Amazon Sky Pirates, and Marcel himself, and the dialogue retains its quality throughout the entirety of the campaign. It's just a well, small disappointment that it's not all fully voice acted, but at the same time, part of me is glad it's not. The right voice actor could take this dialogue and make it hilariously amazing, but the wrong voice actor could also destroy it completely. Each of the individual missions in game come in at between 15 minutes and half an hour each, so it's a game that you can sit down and play one or two missions and slide through a small section of the storyline quite easily without too much fuss, without having to put together a good hour plus aside just for a single fly out. However, don't be surprised if you suddenly find yourself losing two or three hours in the course of playing this game. I know it happened to me quite a lot. I think it's worth mentioning the cell animation quality on this game again, it looks absolutely amazing. But it is also worth mentioning that the sound quality itself is not so great. The machine guns and cannons in the game do sound very Saturday morning cartoonish, and I suppose that does fit the theme, but I would have liked to have heard something a little bit meatier in those guns. The same goes with the engines, each aircraft seems to have its own engine sound modelled, but largely the engine sounds, as you can hear in the background, are not overly interesting. It's, you know, there could be a hairdryer you're listening to for all you know. The sound effects also seem to be one of the few places where I have actually come across glitches. I did run into a situation where a 30mm cannon that was mounted to my aircraft made absolutely no sound when it was fired. I've also noticed that occasionally when making close passes with hostile aircraft, their engine sounds won't actually play as they're flying past. I've also noticed on some of the occasions where they do play, the sound effect can be choppy. However, these sound issues are only minor and don't directly have a major impact on the gameplay itself. And after all, this game is in early access, so some bugs are to be expected. Overall, I found myself really enjoying Bomb. For an early access game, it's relatively bug free. It has an incredibly fun single player campaign that is fully playable even now in the early access period. And it does have a multiplayer option, although trying to find active players is a little bit of an issue at the moment. The game doesn't seem to be very heavily played, so I'm hoping that will change though. It's definitely a game that's worth playing. If you're into flight games and don't mind getting into early access, I recommend you actually take a look at Bomb. If early access is not your thing, I would throw it on your wish list on Steam and keep an eye out for when it's fully released. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.